back here in the nightcap. Gerald Brown in for George Rice. So let's pick up the guest line. I've always, always feel inspired about my blue and orange when I talk to the man with the master plan. He holds it down like no other. You can check him out. CP, the franchise from Knicks Fan TV. It is the official, official location and place for all Knicks fans to get all of your Knicks information and bandy together. CP, what's going on, good brother? How you doing this season? Man, Gerald, I I love the introduction, and it's a great time to be talking (laughs) Knicks basketball, so it's an absolute honor and and a privilege to be back on with you, man. Well, you know what? I got to give credit where credit is due, because I, being able to experience Knicks Fan TV, and all I could think was, wow, this is a place where, again, this is what it's all about with NBA fans, their allegiance to a certain team, their team, and there's so much knowledge and everybody's there to just really share in the success. But I, I got to say this, I've been torn, CP, because the Knicks are 37-27. and 27. They've been playing very well, 19-15 and 15 at home, 9-1 and one in their last 10 games, has won seven in a row. I felt that this was the year if you were going to tank or find a way <laughs> to lose, this was the year. Because I know Victor Wembanyama is there, and he was—he is tailor made for New York. CP, how do you balance knowing that the, the payoff could be this type of pick that's out there? Oh, by the way, you're having an unbelievable season with the Knicks thus far. Gerald, it's tough, man, because I was like you, especially earlier on in the season when when this team was kind of struggling coming out the gates. I said, man, when are we ever going to get that top-end draft pick that will change the fortunes of this franchise? But as time progressed, this team has gotten better and better and better. I mean, since uh, December 4th, when Tom Thibodeau shortened the rotation, this team has gone 27-14. and They're number one in the NBA net rating, number three in offensive rating. Julius Randle playing at an all-star level. Jalen Brunson has been spectacular since he's been here. The acquisition of Josh Hart has given this team a lift, and this is a vastly different team uh, at this moment in time than than that team that came out of training camp, Gerald. It's tough, man, because as you said, you want to, to know that this team – is headed in the right direction and and with it with a franchise altering draft pick but right now this team is competitive they're tough they're playing hard under Tom Thibodeau look they they have a lot of young players contributing to this it's it's Brunson it's Randall it's quickly it's Quentin Grimes Mitchell Robinson and so the, there's great stories about with this team and and you know in New York we we want to see that fight and that competitive spirit and this team has it right now as they're poised for a playoff push yeah, I mean, look, it's great. I think that clearly, you know, if you're a Knicks fan, it's good to see them doing well. But how surprised are you at the fact is that there was points in times that I was hearing rumblings, and I remember I went to see the Knicks early in the season. They played against the Detroit Pistons, and it was right before a road trip. And there was was there was some rumblings within the Knicks circle in the NBA that there was a possibility – if they had lost that next scout that game, and then if they didn't have a successful road trip, they were going to move on from Tom Thibodeau. How surprised are you that a the team has responded the way they have, and b it seems like he has made some adjustments from what he's been known to do in terms of just again really just really honing in on certain guys. How surprised are you have you been at the just adjustments of Tom Thibodeau? I am surprised because there were many points in this season, especially early when you thought he might have lost these guys. You thought the rope was mm-hmm. slipping a little bit and he could have been meeting his doom, but he, he tightened up the rotation. He went with the players that he felt gave him the best chance to win according to his vision, according to his game plan. And that is with, with the Miles McBride, Quentin Grimes, Emmanuel Quickly. Those guys were, were doing the grunt work, the heavy lifting on the defensive end, getting after it. And then at by the trade deadline, they upgrade Miles McBride's spot 
in getting a Josh Hart, the best defensive guard in the league, uh, a guy who's also going to get after it defensively but can also play make. Josh Hart shooting the three ball way better at this stage in, in these seven games with the Knicks than he has with Portland all year. And so they brought in another Tom Thibodeau piece that's, that's kind of an, another glue guy to really bring this thing together. And so early in the season when they had some devastating losses, you know, losses to the Thunder, uh, the Luka Doncic game when, when he, his brilliance in nine seconds and, and they came back and, and beat the Knicks. You know, there were several games where I thought, this could be it. This could be it for Tibbs if they don't turn it around. But give him credit. Because as I said, in, in December 4th, when he made those changes to the to the rotation, that was it. That was the adjustment that he needed to make. And this team is delivering for him. CP, the franchise from Knicks Fan TV. Joining me, Gerald Brown here on the Nightcap uh, on Mad Dog Sports Radio Channel 82. CP, when, when I look at also, there was a lot of heat on Leon Rose, uh, mainly Rose. Again, there was a promise in terms of bringing in, you know, free agents, their CAA clients. None of this stuff materialized. Do you think how big of an acquisition, or better yet, the success of Jalen Brunson, where I'm going to go out on a limb, and say that possibly thus far, if he continue on at this pace, he might be one of the top five big greatest uh, free agent signings by the Knicks ever. Definitely, definitely. I mean, if you look off the rip, you know, Mari Stoudemire was was certainly one, but uh, right. Allen Houston, no doubt about it. But Jalen Brunson, man, this kid has been sensational. Just being named the Eastern Conference Player of the Month, 27 points per game on 52, 53% shooting from the field, 42% from downtown, Gerald. He's been absolutely electric. This has been the biggest prize of Leon Rose's tenure. And this is coming off of the shadows. I mean, they did sign Brunson first, but they had a chance at Donovan Mitchell. And and for whatever reason, that didn't work out. The fans, Some of the fan base were down about it. Some were happy about it that they didn't give up a lot of the young pieces and assets that they have. But Jalen Brunson has certainly turned this Leon Rose tenure from average to looking pretty good. And then, as I said, as you look at the acquisition of Josh Hart, what that's doing for the team. Emmanuel Quickly, who the Knicks drafted under the Rose regime, he's he has six man of the year um, uh, uh, accolades. He deserves it. I mean, Emmanuel Quickly is becoming one of the best two-way players off of the bench in the entire NBA. An absolute force on the defensive end. And then you look at Julius Randle. He's back to playing at an all-star level. The Rose regime did give Julius an extension there. So a lot of these acquisitions now or, or re-signings are starting to look good. And this team is is uh, is in, looking in pretty good shape, man. Ten games over five hundred. No, you're right about that. And I think about the fact is that it kind of soothes and it kind of soothes, soothes the blow. Or it's better yet, softens the blow. The correct word. Soften the blow of knowing that you still have Evan Fournier that's on that roster. And honestly, again, he hasn't lived up to the expectation. And it's difficult to really succeed in New York City. But yeah. a guy like Derrick Rose, he has been a, a, a Tibbs staple. How surprised are you that he's, again, been this kind of a guy – that's really kind of been phased out with all the success that's been going on. Yeah, and and you can chalk that up to one of Tibbs' biggest adjustments because here it is, Derrick Rose, his his basketball son, you know, grown up together in that Bulls organization. The guy who helped the Knicks get to the playoffs two years ago was was a was an instrumental figure with this team. And when the season started, you, you saw Rose. He was he was getting a little bit of minutes off the bench. Then there were some DMPs. And then you're like, okay, maybe they're saving him. Maybe they, maybe it's a load management thing. They don't want to give him too much work. But as you said, Gerald, Derrick Rose has not gotten into any of these games. And yes, he's taken a couple of steps back from two years ago when he was with this team, defensively, offensively. Uh, it is surprising that he hasn't gotten any much run, but that just goes to show you Tom Thibodeau is out here. He, he wants the coach to win. He wants to play to win. And he's willing to do anything, including sacrificing the, the playing time of uh, of one of his best players of all time, and, and that's very, very surprising. CP, the franchise, franchise from Knicks Fan TV, joining me, Gerald Brown, here uh, in the nightcap. So, CP, you look at this team, and obviously, uh, you know, how far can they go? Come on, let's, let's be realistic. Yes, they beat a good Boston team at home. Yeah. I, I get that. 
But we know that uh, Milwaukee's there. Yeah. And they are running away with these things, and they're continuing to add to that team. What is the realistic expectation from UCP yeah. of this, this, this team moving forward with some uh, under 20-some-odd games left in the season? Well, right now they're sitting in the fifth seed. Uh, they are one and a half games back of the Cavs for the fourth seed. I think they can get there. I think they can get to that fourth seed, host the playoffs in the first round. You have Madison Square Garden going crazy, and I think this team can upset the Cavs. I think they can beat the Cavs in the first round. And you never know. Look, they did beat the Celtics, as you said. I don't think they they are at the same level of the top three in the East. You look at Boston, Milwaukee, Philadelphia. I don't think they're there just yet, but I think they can make some noise. This team is going to be a tough out. When you look at Randall and Brunson, your two shot creators, Brunson, an elite shot creator with Mitchell Robinson back. If he's healthy, what he gives his team on the defensive end, his pick and roll coverage, as also on the offensive rebounds, and he gives his team a chance every single night to, to, to remain in games or um, to enhance their offense because they're, they're not a particularly efficient shooting team and they don't really move the ball that well. So a lot of their second chance opportunities that come off the offensive glass, a lot of that is with Mitchell Robinson, man. His impact on this team has been immense. And so I think they can get out of the first round if they have a favorable matchup with the, with the Cavs. And once they get into that second round, Gerald, you never know. I think this team can make some noise. CP, before I let you get on out of here, you know, Obi Toppin is a fan favorite. And a lot of times, a lot of people were feeling like, you know what, when Randall was struggling, it was kind of this guy that was kind of, in a sense, stopping from uh, the progression of Obi Toppin. You know, Randall has turned it around since the All-Star break. And obviously, he's not going anywhere, at least on paper right now. But Obi Toppin, is this a guy that inevitably you see that maybe his time will be uh, spent somewhere else moving forward. Yeah, I think this one is going to end up being a sunk cost. I mean, listen, there's an opportunity cost to everything. And when Julius Randle had his uh, his his standout season two years ago, made the All Star team, uh, the Knicks re-signed him, and I thought they were, they were in the right to do so. The, the, he had given the organization so much, brought the organization to the playoffs for the first time in eight years. He deserved that contract extension. But that same year that Julius had. Uh, a breakout year they had drafted Obi Toppin in the draft and so um, there there is an opportunity cost there you were looking for them to give Obi Toppin more of an opportunity to showcase his skills especially with Tom Thibodeau but with Thibodeau reluctant to go with a smaller lineup him opting to go with more uh, traditional centers I, I don't think Obi Toppin is going to get the opportunity to shine here and that may be some he, he may get that opportunity somewhere else they have about uh, one year left before or they have to make a decision on whether or not they're going to re-sign him. And I'm not so sure he's going to be back. I think he could, if the opportunity presents itself to, to upgrade this team in the offseason via trade, I think he his name could be on the block. And you also have to look at it from, from a top end camp standpoint. I mean, he was picked at, with the number eight pick in the draft. The financially, him sitting on the bench getting 10 minutes a night, that's going to hurt him when it comes to contract negotiations for his next contract. So... I'd have to think that both he and members of his camp are, are looking for a change of senior scenery as well, if that can get him some more opportunity to play. Yeah, I think the interesting thing is, you know, the Knicks, they got a little the mini two-game swing where they are in Miami and Boston, and then they come back home to play Charlotte, and then the next Thursday they go out west against yeah. Sacramento, L.A., and then uh, the Clippers and the Lakers and Portland. Portland. And come, yeah, and then come back Saturday, play Denver, Denver at home. That stretch right there, what should we know about the Knicks on that stretch right there? Yeah, I, I think that's going to tell you a lot of where this team is. You know, this final West Coast trip, uh, back-to-back against the Lakers and Clippers. We'll, we'll see if LeBron plays there. This, this Sacramento team has been so impressive. I think that's going to be a very difficult game for them. Obviously, going up against an MVP candidate, MVP favorite in, in Jokic and the Nuggets is always going to be tough. But if they can get out of that, let's say a, a 500 record, say four and three or, or you know five and two, if they can get out of that stretch there, I think this team continues to make its case as one of the best teams in the league, Gerald. The, one of the best teams in the league. They, they have been that serious, man. This team is a different team with the acquisition of Hart, with, with Robinson back healthy. This team is good. They're, they're a bona fide team right now. You can go to KnicksFanTV.com 
Also on Twitter, Knicks Fan TV, uh, social media, Knicks Fan TV. CP, man, always appreciate you, good brother. Keep doing it, man, because you know what? One day, and it might be soon, it's all going to happen and fall in place for the Knicks. Uh, I'm telling you, man, it, it's going to happen, Gerald, and I, I definitely appreciate all the support. Uh, I love coming on here, and shout-out to Raj Grove, super super producer. Anytime you guys need me on, just let me know. Always a pleasure. He is CP, the franchise of Knicks Fan TV, right here on Ma- the Nightcap on Mad Dog Sports Radio. Channel 82. 